Hello everybody and welcome once again to Feed the Beast Ocean Block. Today we are going to do the Draconium or Draconic Evolution Reactor. So let's get started. So we need to make some bits and pieces. We need to make, um, let's have a look at the reactor stuff in here. If we can type, type Draconium and the reactor, you'll see that what we need are these uh, reactor, Draconic Reactor Core, four stabilizer, reactor stabilizers and one energy uh, injector. The recipes for these are fairly straightforward. Actually, this is the recipe for the energy injector. Let's have a look at this one. Because it, oops, done it again. Press the wrong place, space, the wrong field highlighted. So let's have a look at it. Start with this one. Because I've already made one of these. So you need four ingots of draconium, not too expensive. Two ingots of iron, that's nothing these days. And then um, some reactor stabilizer inner rotors. And the recipe for these is awakened draconium draconium ingots and a draconium core. So actually it's not too bad these days. So, so we can get, well there's a few blocks of that, we can do one of these. I've actually already made this up, so I've already got this one here. So let's just take this out of here. The core, that's the recipe for this one, is four ingots awakened draconium, uh, two large chaos fragments, one chaos shard, and three uh, draconium ingots. So actually they're not too bad. Let's get those ready. And stuff. It's actually got everything prepared in here, you can see. So what we need is four of these. I'll just take it like this, spread it out four. And then we can take the ingots out next and then the and then the shard last. So I can put the shard straight into here because I'm not going to be doing anything else with it. Uh, and here we can put some ingots down, so let's just do that. And then after that we can put down three ingots of uh, draconium. This and then it will separate the large shards up as well, so we can do four items. It doesn't really matter where we put these things, to be honest with you. Put one in here, and it actually will appear in here, so that's fine. And then the last, I mean, the last thing we need is one more of these. And as soon as we put this in, it'll start running. So let's, if I get to sort of like a position like this, I can click here on this one. I don't, you don't have to click the face. I think you can just click the side, and you'll see it started straight away. Ah, didn't take too long at all as it happens because it's so one of it, it doesn't need too much power. So we've got the reactor core, and then we've got we need four of these stabilizers. So I've got the reactor stabilizer frame the recipe for that was wyvern course, but well, sort of expensive iron, nothing, and of course, an awakened draconium. It's also not too bad. Let's go and have a take out of this. And so we need also we need the four chaotic cores, which is pretty expensive. So we'll take these out here like this. We're making four of those, so we can put all these into stacks, like this. The rings we'll have a look at in a second, and also the rotors we'll have a look at, and the large shards and the awakened draconium. So the recipe for these stabilizer rotors is uh, wyvern core. So they're reasonably expensive. The reactor stabilizer outer rotor, which is with diamonds instead of awakened draconium, but, uh, in, compared to the ink. The in, uh, inner one, that's not too bad. Let's have a look at the next one. The ring, the rest of it's fairly straightforward. Why haven't caused diamonds and gold? Mm. Got a lot of reasonable amount of draconium for this. In fact, uh, we'll go have a look at the recipes in a short while because they are expensive. So we can right click these into here like this. Because we're going to make four of these, so that's why we're doing that. So here I can split these up into three because we need four because we need three per. Th Per item, don't we? So we've got one, two, three. If I can get my mask going properly, we need four of these, and we also need four reactor stabilizers, which we'll put in the middle. So we can put those in here like this, and then we can put the rest of them into the into the into the core here, as you can see, and that should start automatically. So it's going to It's going to. This is where the automation comes in now. You can see straight away it's producing the next one and it doesn't take very long at all but i didn't actually have a look at the recipes i've got the recipes for these so the reactor core required 64 million so that's not obviously wasn't a problem uh the injector required 60 million which isn't very much and the stabilizers required 60 million as well so i'll just click that yes so they all need 60 million so that's not too bad so we've got four of these now we are also going to need some of these 
flux gates. Fluid gates, I'm not quite sure where, where they've come from or what the use of them is in terms of fluid. It's just a way of, to control fluid. And let's have a look at the recipe for these. So that's a draconium core. Potentially, should be made a redstone compared to redstone blocks and iron. So it's not too expensive, but they are quite important. So last time we also did um, something else. What I do need is an awakened draconium ingot. So let's just get, well, actually, we need eight. Let's just get an awakened draconium ingot out of here. I think we should be able to get one of these. I could use blocks. I'm not going to. I'm just going to start with one ingot. <laughs> the more the more you put in, the actual more the more chance of things go wrong. The whole thing just explodes. And last, I did do a test on this. The first time, it worked just fine. I've just gone to the wrong place. Never mind. We can go over here. And the second time, it um, blew up. <laughs> so far, I'm not quite sure why it blew up yet. So here I've got set out again some. Uh, blocks here and this this, uh, this thing uh, potentiometer is set to five and I put them over the zero block so that means that six blocks away I think one two three four five six exactly the six blocks away from the center here uh, so it's a reasonable distance it's not too bad so we can fly up on here and then we can put down the reactor core in the middle like that and then we can fa put facing this the these stabilizers let's just get the stabilizers out here hopefully i can do it yes no problem so they are facing into the reactor core as you can see i should be able to reach that one from here as well so they're all prepared now we can simply remove these slime blocks let's just get rid of those i can't reach that one so here we put down the um the energy injector. So let's put that down in the middle. If you've probably seen this before, so it's probably not such a big deal. I'll break down, I'll put it down here and then I'll break down the block below it because that's where we ah didn't yes, I've seen that before. I have to be direct directly above it. So let's go directly above it and then put it down again. Like that. So that's facing upwards towards the core. It should be directly over the core, as you as you can see it is. And everything should be in line with the core, which is, you can probably already seen it is. That's why I'd use the slime box. Let's just pick up the redstone. I think there's a bit more over here because I broke one block. So now we're almost ready to go. So what we now have to do is we have to come and basically give this power. So what, what, what a, oops, too much. So let's just fill that one back in again. I've probably got some blocks in here. Yes, six. So the, the cable we're going to use this time is the ultimate cable from Mechanism. The reason I'm using mechanism cables is they transfer more power, so that's quite handy. And then here I'm going to put the uh, stabilizer, uh, the flux gate in here. I only needed one because I'm going to be using power points and uh, flux points and flux plugs to do the rest of the stuff. So you can put it down like that, and you'll see it's gone the wrong way. Okay, didn't want it to do that. So, gonna, so what I'll do is I'll put down two more of these. And the arrow is facing that direction which is not what we want. We want the arrow facing into here because that's the direction the, the, the power is going to go. So we just come around here. Now we can put the flux. Actually, we'll use the same one because this one has been configured, as you, as you have seen, like that. So this time the arrow is going this direction. And on here I'm going to put a flux point. So I should have provides energies to the uh, adjacent blocks, removing energy from your flux network. That's what I want we want. We'll put that down here. And then we configure that. So I've actually created a new network since last time called the reactor network. I'm not sure I need to do that, but I've set it up like that. So we'll just have a look on here. And then we'll limit the amount of power going through to 300,000 in here. So no more than 300,000 is going to pass across from here. On this one here, I have to re reconfigure this one. I've set this one up to be Duncan's network, but let's just change that to reactor network as well. And as soon as I do that, the energy is going to start flowing. It normally starts flowing between these two, actually, when I've done this before. This one is already set up. And 
and I've limited this to 100,000. I'm not sure I need to do that. Let's just make it 500,000. I think 500,000 is a reasonable amount. So that's pulling power. That's the reactor one. So that's pulling. I have to make sure this one receives energy from adjacent blocks. So that's correct. And this one's passing energy. Let's just check what I set up this one for power. Limited to 200,000. I think 300,000. So now we'll make it 500,000 here. So that's the amount of power that's going to get transferred into here. And then the last one we have to put is another another point on the end of here. Receives energy. Sorry, another plug. Yeah. Which is going to receive power from here. So the reactor is ready as it happens like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to receive power and we'll limit it to, say, 100,000. So we're not going to transfer more than 100,000. We're going to select the network as being the reactor network. And with priorities, we're not going to set at the moment. So then the last thing is this thing here to configure this. And when we now right click, tell you what, I'll come back in a minute when it's stopped raining. So here we have the core or the reactor. And the different and the different things are sort of interesting. So here we have uh, this core temperature, which is a basically ambient temperature, twenty degrees, and that goes up to any very high level. And if it exceeds eight thousand, which is where these red lines start, then it starts to get into an uncontrollable state and blows up. <laughs> I don't want that, <laughs> uh, as I as I read. And here we've got this containment field strength, which goes not up to one hundred percent but it goes up to 99.9 .9 or something like that. And then the containment field wants to be around about 50%. This is the one that the injector's pushing out to contain this reaction here. Here we have the energy saturation. And this, this when this goes up to 100%, it starts to slow the reactor down. And this one here is the fuel conversion level. In other words, the efficiency the reactor's running at. So for example, now we can put one ingot in here. And we will get out maybe once, not sure, probably a small shard. And then you can charge it up. At the moment, it's not going to charge up because of this. This has got a redstone signal of zero. So what we can now do, is we can give this a, red, a this is a low voltage, a low signal, and this is a high signal. So basically, this is um, redstone value of zero, and this will be redstone value of 15. In fact, it does tell you in that, the tooltip. So what we can now do is we can then control this a bit with a bit of analog analog magic, and that's using the um, this redstone comparator here. So we can take this out, and then I can use from this, I can use this redstone cable here, like so I've got redstone wire, I should have enough for that. Redstone alloy wire, so we'll just basically take it along here like this. And then put it across here to hold shift when I do that, like that. So as this now comes up, we can then stay here. We're not allowed to say it yet. We've got to say give it a charge because we haven't got all of the screen available at the moment. So let's now configure this. And I have to do this from the end here. If I try doing it from the top, it just picks up the redstone um, wire and it doesn't pick up the foot gate. So we'll set this one to say let's start it at about 300,000. Think that's a reasonable amount because that's going to be here. That's thirty thousand. Okay, try three hundred thousand and apply that. So that's now going to be allowing the charge to come in here uh, to come through at a rate of three hundred thousand. You can see that this one's got it's filled up because it's got the green lining and this one's got nothing in it. So let's now charge it up. And when you start to charge it up, you get some different fields. So we can, first of all, we'll set this one here, which is a semi-automated shutdown, um, which shuts down when the temperature goes below 2,500, and the saturation need reaches 99%. In other words, it gets fuller power. And here we have this redstone comparator mode. And the, there's various ones in here, so that it'll give an output. Um, well it says, will output 0 to 15 as the temperature rises to 10,000. Okay. This is a negative one here, which is going to do exactly the opposite. And this is the shield. It says format error. That's just that's 
small bug. Uh, so the signal will give uh, a value of 15 to 100%, depending on the field strength. And what we want to use is the, no the inverted version of this, like that. And as soon as you do that, you'll see this has got a power of 7. Um, and this is now starting to charge up. And as it charges up, here the energy saturation has gone up to 50%, which is good. And you'll see here it says warm state warming up. And here we've got the temperature, which should go up. Actually, it's all ready to go. That was a bit fast. So before I do this, I'm just going to save my game, and I'll be back in a second. So let's activate this now. It went charged up rather quickly. I was a bit surprised about that. So that looks good. So the energy, the generation rate here is going up, and the fuel field is go. Oops, it's, something's gone wrong here. <laughs> that wasn't went up far too quickly. Maybe I haven't got enough power going through here. This has gone down to a level of two. Uh, anyway, I'm shutting it down, <laughs> so it should be okay. This is dropping down again. So maybe I should use something else. Uh, as a as a saturation, I'm sure this is the one I should be using the shield. I've done this before, so I did use shield last time. So the, as the shield containment field goes up, this should go down. So therefore, less power is going through here. Maybe I've got this too high. Well, that should be okay. I think that should be okay. As you can see, it just it was a beep going through here. So we've actually got zero coming out of here now. <laughs> oh dear, have I got this right? So as you can see, it is actually shutting down. So I don't really want it to shut down. I want to activate it again. So let's activate this again. And if this goes wrong, I'm going to have just, I don't know, restart and come back from where I was. So this field should go up here like this. And this should stay around about 50% when it's running properly. Here this is going down too low, so I have to shut it down again. Uh, the energy saturation is going down too quickly. Maybe I've got this set here. I set it to 100,000. So there shouldn't be more than 100,000 coming out of here. Um, I don't know. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'll be back in a second when I figured it out. Well, that's interesting. I've done this three times now. Once it's failed and once it's worked just fine. But that didn't like that. Maybe it needs more uh, awakened draconium. Let's put these two blocks in here. Let's see if that works. No, charge, we can charge it up again. I do have a feeling there's something weird about um, the amount of awakened draconium you put into this. Because this is now charging up. And it's charging up at a less... It, last time it was almost instantaneous, wasn't it? Maybe I just put too little fuel in as you can see so it's really it's still charging up here i've changed this to 250,000 and put a redstone lever on it just in case this was part of the problem it might not have been it might just be that set this to shield minus so, so we're getting an output here of seven and this is now wait we're still waiting for this to start up so we've still got this set up to sas mode and the last time it did charge up extremely quickly i was Bit surprised about that. Maybe it's that 300,000. Anyway, doesn't matter. We'll try it again. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll put down what actually happens when you screw this up. So now we can activate this and let's look at what's going on again. Generation is too high. Stop. Oops, shut down. As you can see here, the generation is 700,000. That's far too fast. Is this plug not working? Tell you what we'll do. I'll just I'll just recable this instead of putting a plug here. I'll put a, some of these draconium uh, uh, ultimate universal cables, and I'll be back in a second. Ah, I think I found the problem. Problem was this this particular oh, um, energy pile on here was turned the wrong way, so this was actually inputting power into here. So it was taking far too much power out of the reactor. Have a quick look at these network connections over here. So we'll look at the network connections. You'll see this is, before it was 500,000, just 
out and not coming in again, which was a bit strange. I was a bit puzzled by that. So anyway, I figured it out. So let's just, this is actually reasonable. So we're just putting 100,000 out. And then we should be able to, it should be charged up now. So look, let's activate this this time. So the, the containment field strength goes up as the temperature stays constant. Actually, that's good. And the energy saturation is going down, but that's okay. As long as the energy saturation stays reasonably high, we're fine. And this, co and this containment field is now going down. Yeah, it's going down. Uh, so this we have a look at the flux gate. It, it's actually passing out 66,000 RF through here. So this should also 66,000 RF as it's great. So that's great. So that's actually now working, I think. Doesn't look as though anything's going bad. And over time, this conversion rate, 300 nanobuckets per tick, is reasonable for 100,000 RF. So we're actually generating a net of Let's have a look. This is 100,000. And here we are actually putting in here, which is using 66,000. We're actually gaining about 30,000 RF, which is a bit feeble. <laughs> After all this work, it's a bit feeble. So, but we can then change this. Let's put this now up to 200,000 here. Like that. And then this should start to increase. So we'll have a look at the reactor here. So as you can see, the temperature should go up a little bit. And the containment strength field should go down again. Um, what we do? What are we actually generating as output? So the, incre the generation rate is increasing. So that should increase to two hundred thousand. And as soon as it gets to two hundred thousand, things should stabilise again. So the, this is actually going down. The energy saturation. So any second now we'll get up to 200,000. So it's slowly creeping up here and the energy saturation is now going, is stable. It's actually going down slightly. But I think that's reasonably stable because now we've reached 200,000. So this should actually go up. And yes, it indeed is going up like this. And then the fuel conversion rate will also be increasing. So it's getting more efficient. So we're using 623 nanobuckets per tick. Okay, good. So now I'm going to push this up another 100,000 here. In fact, what I'm going to do is push it up to 380,000. And why I'm doing that, is because that's the amount of power that one of those power part four uses. <laughs> they use a lot of power. So as you can see, this containment field strength is going down, but should also start to increase again. It should become stable as the power goes up. As it goes down, this should um, power goes up there, so the, the redstone goes up. So this now. It's using 166,000. And now again, here's the containment field is going back up again. The temperature is, is actually increasing or decreasing? Decreasing as it happens, but the energy saturation is now going up again. So we are producing 100,000. That's actually not very much what's gone wrong. Let's screw that up. No. That's correct. Have we got anything in the network here? This is this full, yes. So this is actually not producing anymore. I don't think the fuel's actually being used anywhere, so it's actually going down. Right, good. Have one last look at this now, and well then we'll go and attach the energy pile onto the network. So then things should start to actually use power again. So let's just do that. And this is actually prepared over here. So I have got a, a draconium here and nothing in this diamond chest. So let's activate this power point here. We'll set this one to a, a the reactor network like this. And we'll have a look at the wireless connections. So this power pot is using 350,000 Fe per tick, which is now going to drain you off the, off the, um, 
off the network. In fact, it's really fast, by the way. This, if you didn't see it, you just saw one go through here. And we're getting 64 at a time. In fact, what I do need to do is connect this out so we can do that. Let's just do that with rough again. Oh, by the way, if the reactor explodes down here, we're safe. <laughs> I, I, I know that from experience. <laughs> so, right, we'll take an ultimate power pipe upgrade in here. Because we want to filter stuff out. So what we need to filter out of from here will be some seeds and some uh, fertilizers. So let's just take those out of here. And then let's put this down. And then, of course, I have to then have to take the wrench and just take these out of here. Otherwise, some strange, strange stuff's going to happen. I should have the wrench in here. So let's just right-click this one so everything will get output. Oh, I need to do these first of all. Let's turn these off before I do anything like that. Just right-click this one, and then we can then right-click this and put into here the um, upgrade, and then we can simply shift-click these into here like this. So these are blacklisted items. So we want to blacklist these so those don't come out of the chest here. So nothing's gone out. And in here, we haven't got any seeds because we did it early enough, but in here we'll start to get some draconium ingots and they'll come in fairly quickly let's just empty this out if i can which i can't but i can do this sort that out uh put the seeds back into here by the way and the fertilizer essence I'll take these out of here so there's nothing in there for the time being let's put those away back into the system now we'll look in here so basically that's Got nothing in, and this has already got eight ingots in here in that short period of time. So let's go back and check the reactor again. Well, it doesn't look too bad. So this time, the fuel conversion rate is 1,000. It's actually going up. Uh, the temperature is 2,300. It's creeping up, and the reactor and the containment field strength is also creeping up, so that's good. And you can see that it's actually, yes, it's done 11,000. The energy saturation is actually going down because this hasn't reached 380,000 yet. But it is increasing, you can see the generation rate is increasing. So that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoy the next bit too. So until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now. And it's warmed up so we can now activate this. Ah, I thought so. thought I was ready for this. So we can now activate it. So we're now generating. Oops, let's stop this. Let's shut down. That's wrong. Might blow up if I'm not careful. Oops. <laughs> oh dear. Ha <laughs> I think I didn't do that fast enough. I have got something wrong. So let's get out of here. I'm just going to blow up my island.
I don't understand. Oh dear, <laughs> I think I've got to have to record this again. <sighs> so, no power left. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happened to the world. Has it destroyed the island as well? well there's a few bits which are still around. Oh, yes, the dome's still here. <laughs> In fact, I should be able to, the water levels are going to be very bad. Okay. Let's see if we can actually just teleport back down to the, if I can actually teleport. Oh, I'm a bit shocked at the moment. I don't understand quite what I did wrong with that one. So awful. Let's go home. Oh, I can't teleport, probably got not enough power. <clears throat> right. <laughs> it's interesting which blocks have actually survived here. Lots of obsidian here for some reason. That must be stone, huh? In fact, I've got the wrong clothes on, I think. So we will go into very slow mode, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's go down here a bit. Got to find a place where I can get in without too much problem. <clears throat> Maybe down here. So it has so it has blown up my power, so that won't help very much either. <laughs> oh dear. Right. I'll be back in a second. 